Summerfield is a remarkably beautiful place. Astonishingly beautiful and big landscapes. Wide open spaces. You can see the sunrise on one side of the pasture and see it set on the other side. If you've never seen a North Carolina sunset or a North Carolina sunrise, it'll stop you in your tracks. You just feel something different here. Summerfield is unique in that we're, we're situated between the mountains of North Carolina and the coastal plains. Uh, we also have lots of rivers, the headwaters of a lot of rivers that go throughout North Carolina all the way to the ocean. And it's a really, really special place here in the Piedmont. I think the Piedmont has one of the best trail systems in the entire country. Close to 40 miles of trail in total, probably about 25, 26 miles of that runs along the northern boundaries of the lakes. It still has a lot of rural flavor. A lot of old tobacco farms. I love the town of Summerfield. Summerfield is really rich in its history. Its history goes back to the 1700s, originally named Bruce's Crossroads. Charles Bruce was an ardent patriot. He recruited men for the Revolutionary War. Again, this whole area is on the National Historic Registry. My name is David Couch, and I grew up in a small town just south of Summerfield. My first job was working for a tobacco farmer. Now, when I got old enough to drive, I started a little cattle farm, and it got in my blood, and it, it will never leave. And I've, I've loved it my entire life. All the things that happen on a farm you're always at the edge of these beautiful rural vistas, the rolling hills, the rolling pastures. My love affair with farming began with those long views over open spaces. Summerfield had many of these amazing long views over open spaces, and uh, we still have some, but we're losing them, and we're losing them fast. Population in Summerfield has grown from about 1,680 in 1980 to well over 11,000 as of 2019. As farmers aged out, they began to sell that land to developers, and we've seen a lot of residential development over the last 15 or 20 years. For the last 25 years in Summerfield, we've really been building the same type of neighborhood and the same type of house. Houses are typically built on one to one and a half acre lots. They would sell in the six, seven hundred thousand dollar range. You have people who want to come back into the area that may have gone to college, or you have people that just want to downsize. And unfortunately, there aren't a lot of options. So that creates what I call a turnstile town it makes it very hard to retain your culture, your talent, and the people that have enjoyed the town so much have no choices and no options with which to stay here. If we continue with the approach of just a cul-de-sac on every 10 acres, then you're not preserving the rural feel of the community. If they keep going down the path of suburban sprawl and piecemeal development one cul-de-sac at a time, the Summerfield everybody loves will be lost, lost forever. And this, is, this has been the pattern in most of the United States and, and areas that are experiencing growth, is it just eats up this land. Real estate developers build it that way because of the zoning. Uh, that's what tells them how they should do it. I think David learned from the experience of building one neighborhood according to the rules and doing the best he could, uh, that if you're zoning is set up so that the only thing you're allowed to build 
these really big lots, very low density with big houses sitting on them, guess what you build? So in the Pitchfork neighborhood, what we came to call the Pitchfork because of its form, you know, you see a, a well-produced example of exactly what the zoning was designed to promote. I'm very proud of the quality there, but I knew that in the next phases of anything that I built and developed here, I wanted to do something different. The sense of stewardship that he has, he just felt like the land deserved better than, than more of the same. Summerfield Farms has always been a working farm. Uh, we produce grass-fed and grass-finished beef here. That's the best fence I've ever known is good feed. Yeah. yeah. In 2011, we had an event here by Triad Local First. It was a community table event. We cleared out the barn. 135 participants showed up. We had a lovely dinner out under the tree at Rascal's Ridge. We had a string quartet playing. And for the first time, we opened this farm up to the public, and I saw the unbelievable joy that everyone derived that night. And it switched for me uh, that day. It's, wouldn't it be nice to do something that was so well done that we all could live like that every day of our lives, and you could provide that much joy for that many people? David came to ION about five or six years ago. He was impressed with the, with the level of execution and the design. I think what really impressed David when he saw ION for the first time is that by building houses a bit closer together, you can really preserve vast natural spaces, find the right path for trails and greenways, and keep a deeply pastoral feeling. That, I think, was really the impetus for David coming to us and saying, if I were to develop in the form of neighborhoods, uh, real walkable, compact neighborhoods, instead of more suburban sprawl, what would it look like? At the oldest part of Summerfield, the old crossroads where the town hall is, you can see a kernel of these kind of traditional principles there. Buildings built close to the street, buildings with solid materials, sidewalks. Even though that's a small area, it's beautiful. Well, let's do more of it. You know, the textbook on how to design beautiful neighborhoods that are just right for the Piedmont of North Carolina is all around us. And so we've been visiting those new neighborhoods and historic ones. And just looking, measuring. How wide are the streets? How long is a block? How far apart are the street trees planted? Each of those incorporates many of these traditional design principles, but it's more rural and pastoral. I was so blown away with the creativity and the innovation. They've been so careful and so thoughtful. And this same theme of incredible attention to detail is inherent on all these amazing places. As we traveled in the Low Country, we saw beautiful villages and neighborhoods designed to preserve and honor stunning vistas over the marshes. And I think that was really inspiring for David and for us because it showed how we can do the same for the treasured rural vistas of Summerfield. I've been fortunate enough to assemble a very strategic group of properties. It encompasses about a thousand acres and my goal now is to create a series of villages. With trees, open land, gorgeous views, and a working farm, David Couch has a plan. He's hoping he gets approval and can create something special in Summerfield. I hired Dover Coal because they're best in class, world class. He said, well, let's start with the green parts. Carefully select which ones they are. Get the most important views, those beautiful long vistas, and preserve them forever and then we work on the neighborhoods themselves so that they feel good when you're there because of the tree-lined streets and the front porches where you meet your neighbors. 
the blocks and streets connect and you have ways to go from here to there. And you might even be able to walk or bike. Safer streets that are pedestrian friendly and bike friendly. Housing choices. Places to live for lots of different kinds of people and households of different sizes and ages and interests. It's broken down into 11 villages connected by road or trail. Housing for young adults to seniors. These renderings show how it was designed with nature in mind. There are all kinds of amazing landmarks here that we can preserve and use new ways. Cool buildings like the Thomas Farmhouse, which can be a farm to table restaurant in the future, for example. Uniting our community in one place for things to do and places to go. The trails in the region are shaping up to be among the best in the country, but they don't connect and they can connect now because of the way we're planning the land. This is rural living, and there will be farming activities integrated into everything that happens here. And more access to trails and open space. Those big green spaces would be to a less scrupulous developer the first place to build. They're wide open, they're already cleared, they're relatively flat. A less careful developer would just start there and fill up all that green space. And I think we've, we've got a once in a lifetime opportunity here to do the reverse. That's, that's I think, the most important feature here is protecting, not just temporarily, but forever, the long views across open space. There's been very strong opposition. The proposed Summerfield Farms Village would offer a variety of homes and even include an assisted living facility. Not everyone is on board. When you're talking about developing almost a, a thousand acres, it becomes a major news story. Sometimes it's been referred to as affordable housing. It's, it's been made to seem very frightening. The misinformation that has come out has been astounding. And, and the people that have come out with the biggest voices are probably the people who've done the least research on what the plan development is. If anything, it'll make it better because what it's gonna give us in Summerfield is places to go and create an opportunity for other people to be part of the Summerfield uh, experience. Right now, you have to almost be a millionaire to buy a piece of property and a house and that's not right. We should be able to have our kids and our grandkids be able to afford to live in Summerfield. My daughter is 24 years old and she wants to move back into Summerfield, but unfortunately there are no alternatives in her price range. She wants something that's more like a bungalow or a cottage. I would honestly love to live out here in Summerfield. You know, I work out here, but there's just not anything really affordable. To be able to live where you work, um, would be amazing and, and it would be great just to have people like not only my age but you know a little bit more diversity in Summerfield as well. Uh, it's offensive to me that 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 there's no options for for people to live in this town unless you want to have a 4,000 square foot three-car garage on two and a half acres. I don't want that and I feel that I've paid my dues in this community being a business owner here and being as connected to it, then I should be allowed to live here. We need to have options for anybody that wants to live here. Why is it a bad thing that our children's teachers could live in the same community that we do, that our children do? Why, why is that a bad thing? One of the more interesting things about the villages of Summerfield Farms would be the ability for a community that can be walkable and have meeting spots and maintain some of the great vistas and rural vibes that we have out here. I think it would be a big improvement over what we've been doing the last 20 years. It creates a sense of community, a way for the community to gather that it currently doesn't have. The most exciting part of this plan is the opportunity to develop the greenway and the, the trail infrastructure that will be so necessary in the future. Having more trails built is just going to be a, a boon to everybody. We live here on the farm, right here at Summerfield Farms. You know, I, I walk to the market to get my groceries. This is, this is our forever home. This is the rest of our lives. And what David's trying to do by having these different village options is be able to share that. Anyone who wants to live in Summerfield, that wants to be a part of this community, that wants to be a part of building Summerfield's legacy, will have that chance. 
The town motto sums it up very well. It, we're respectful of the past and focused on the future. The big idea is that this should be a welcoming place, and Summerfield Farms proves that already. And that's really where this entire idea began. Any and everyone who's ever come to Summerfield Farms, without exception, knows that this is not broken ground. This is communal ground, and this is joyful ground, and it's a healing ground. People come here for festivals or events or for f big moments in the life of their families, and they have this unbelievable experience. And I think it's just a preview of the sense of welcoming that will be throughout the villages at Summerfield Farms. Everybody here in Summerfield, we need to stick together. There's no telling what we can make this town if we stick together and love each other.